So I will explain what a privileged science is and why that is so bad. First, a few more consequences of this climate change. For instance, drought and hunger, severe storms, uh, hurricanes. The number of hurricanes is not yet rising, but the percentage of very strong uh, hurricanes is definitely rising, uh, it causing a lot of increasing damage. And this goes without any explanation. We all know that sea level is rising, that rainstorms are getting more and more severe, flooding the, the country from the rivers and everywhere. Now, this is a bit different. Here you can see one of the causes why uh, economics is a main cause of climate change and of many other kinds of disasters. What you see here is a typical example of economic thinking. By the way, this photograph was taken on the Isle of Madagascar, the huge island uh, on the eastern side of Africa, where you can see that uh, a large forest is being demolished. And that's because this delivers a lot of economic profit. When you have a forest, you can do nothing with it, economically spoken. But when you cut the trees, you can make a, a double profit from it because you can sell the wood and start agriculture on the terrain that came free. But unfortunately, of course, we all know that this is not really a profit. Yeah, it's a profit in money, but it's a loss in other terms. For instance, for some creatures that are living in those forests. Here you have two lemurs. They are a, a kind of monkeys, so they are a, a quite close relatives of us. And they live in, in the woods in, in Madagascar. And they are severely threatened with extinction because the places where they live are getting destroyed. And actually, this is just one example of what is now called the sixth extinction. If you've never heard of this term, just imagine the fifth extinction was the one that killed all dinosaurs some 65 million years ago and where the fifth extinction was caused by a huge meteorite crashing into the earth, the sixth extinction is caused by us, humans. We are the meteorite of our days. Here's another consequence of uh, economics. Economics has never been able to distribute wealth a little bit in a fair way. Uh, and that you can see that very clearly here because this man shows a striking example, a shocking example of poverty. And if you compare him with the owner of this large yacht, uh, you can imagine that probably uh, the owner, uh, who must be really wealthy, does not know anything about this poor man, which you can still see to the right. And if he knows about him, he probably doesn't care. So first, now let me decide and define the concept of proto-science. Uh, and before I do that, uh, I can tell you that uh, a large part of my book on economics deals with the proof that each of these seven characteristics of proto-science all are very uh, well to be found within economics, which proves that economics is a proto-science. And what I did was, uh, after thorough research, I defined proto-science uh, using seven characteristics that you can see here. And I will explain three of them uh, because I cannot do them all because that, that would take too much time. But uh, let me start by number one, struggling schools. And I don't have to, to take much time for that because, well, uh, we've talked about that already. So let me go to the, the second one, faulty concepts, words that don't match, that are, are wrong words. In the book, I call them 
impetus words, and I explain why I use that term. I give you here th three examples of, it, of them. There are more in the book, but uh, you get the idea by looking at those three only. First, the, the concept of value, which in economics equates to money. Now, you and I uh, both know very well that value is not the same as money because there are many ways in which you attribute value to things that cannot be expressed in, in, in money. For instance, the love for your husband or your wife or your children or your parents. The smell of something really nice, for instance, the old bakery that you passed when you were young, etc., etc. But uh, in economics, there's only one kind of value, and that's the one that can be expressed in money, in dollars or in euros or in pounds or whatever. And if you think in that way, it's easy to see how the value of 9 million shirts made by child slaves is equal to the value of one soccer player uh, that was sold to actually to Paris Saint-Germain, the French football club, uh, and that was Neymar in 2017. Uh, and although it is true, it is definitely true that uh, you, for those uh, 220 million euros, you will be able to buy some 9 million shirts, but that's only money. We all know that uh, the, the, the value that is lost due to the, the sorrow, the misery of those children that at the age of perhaps even five years are forced to do a lot of heavy la labor, uh, for instance, in cotton fields and elsewhere, it, it doesn't weigh up to the possibility that uh, Neymar will score a few extra goals during football matches. And this equation also misses out on the misery of the parents who are forced to sell their children in, a, in order to be able to feed the other children. Second example. Humans in many economic uh, models and theories uh, are treated as if they were homo economicus. That's the official term for it. And this homo economicus has the, the following characteristics. They are 100% selfish, 100% rational, and also 100% well-informed. Now, I don't know if you recognize yourself in this picture. Probably not. Uh, I would go even further. Uh, in my opinion, I, I can say that describing humans as having these characteristics is an insult. This is definitely not true and nevertheless uh, the main, the dominant economic models are based on this weird and insulting conception, concept. Um, next, externality. An externality is something that is just up for grabs. You can take it whenever you want because it's free. Uh, many economic models uh, use externalities, or, 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 or rather, they, they don't uh, e even talk about them because they are uh, uh, self-evident. You can take them whenever you want. Mainly, uh, when, when people talk about externalities, they deal with elements of nature. Uh, just, for instance, when you, you, you destroy the forest on Madagascar, as I showed you, but also uh, humans far away or in other social classes don't matter to the others. And so as being irrelevant, they are just mere externalities. The same goes for humans later, for the, the generations to come. We take everything now and uh, if we go on, we will leave nothing for later generations. As an example, uh, we take from the ground, from the mines, all kinds of metals and other ores, and we use them now. At, okay, we try it in, up to a certain extent to recycle them, but that is uh, always uh, only less than 100% effective. So 
if you move on in, 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 in theoretically to generations in a thousand or perhaps in ten thousand years they will probably not be able to, to take those elements from minds as we do. We just take it and leave nothing for others. That's a, a small number of faulty concepts in economics and in the book you can find many more. Now let's go to the myths. And the first myth that I mention here, also in the book, there are many more, but uh, I limit myself to three examples here. Uh, the first is the trickle-down uh, myth, which states prosperity naturally trickles down, so it's good that the rich are getting richer, because that will f uh, benefit the poor as well. Well, I don't know if you believe this, but it is obviously a myth, and this is not only obvious intuitively, but it has been investigated thoroughly, and every time those investigations prove that this is simply not true. Uh, the, the, the people on the top are getting richer and richer nowadays, and the, the people at the bottom of the pyramid hardly benefit at all from this. So the differences in wealth are getting bigger and not smaller. The second one, the perfect market myth. This states that the per perfect market, which has uh, only perfect competition, is always in equilibrium. Now this myth is uh, a myth for several reasons. One is the concept of a perfect market, which is, by definition, a market in which governments don't act at all. They don't interfere in the market. So uh, this is the, the, the ideal capitalist idea of those people who are fond of that. And, and, and they are not bothered by governments. They can just do what they want. And that's a perfect market. And now, First of all, such a perfect market doesn't exist at all. Never has a perfect market existed. So that's the first reason why this remark is a myth and no more than that. The other is that the people who state this talk about an equilibrium. Well, such an equilibrium has never existed, not in any country, and it will probably never exist. Because what we see when we study uh, the, the, the movements and the developments in economics, you can always see that uh, the economy goes up and down and uh, ev every time it crashes again. So equilibrium is a fiction. This is a myth. Finally, the money myth, which uh, states, according to many economists, that economic science is not about money. The funny thing is that many other economists state exactly the opposite and they say that money is at the core of economics, which again illustrates the struggling schools. And now, I have to limit my time a bit so I don't talk about the other four characteristics of proto-science, but you can find them all in the book. I just mentioned them briefly. That's copycat uh, methods in which economics uh, tries to harvest the successes of other sciences by copying their methods, which for, for many reasons doesn't really work. Uh, the next is oversimplification, then there is a lack of experimental proof and also lack of success. Let's talk a bit about sustainable development, which, as many people know, has three main areas called people, planet and profit. And ideally, those three are in a perfect balance, which means that people can live in a good way, a healthy way and are empowered and free while planet deals with uh, nature and climate and everything, and ideally it, uh, both are saved and were uh, going strong. Uh, profit is supposed to be the uh, 
economic activity which supports both people and planet in such a way that it all goes well. An example of how people is not going well, and well, I've shown it already, this is this poor man, and an example of problems uh, concerning planet is shown here. Now, we all know that this is not the true picture. Yeah, well, the photos are, but the ideal balance between people, planet and profit is uh, not uh, existing. Instead, it's more like Instead, it's more like this, showing uh, that profit is always the main uh, element uh, when economic decisions are to be made, and people and planet are largely ignored. 